My name is Mudula Menfati. I'm the founder and the farm manager of MS Poultry Farm. So my presentation is divided into two. First of all, I will talk about the overcoming the adversaries and the challenges. Then I will discuss on the main thing that is the roadmap to the future. So the journey to poultry. My journey started last year when I attended the elite summer camp, that is the leadership, entrepreneurship, leadership and ICT organized by Global Youth Innovation Network, that is Gene Gambia. From there, I meet up with some farmers and also I meet up with some poultry farmers and other young entrepreneurs. By then, I was doing the IT. Last 13 months, 14 months ago, I was doing IT. But after I met with these farmers, they explained to me about agriculture, then I fall in love with it. Then from there, I also attend another training organized by Nedi. Then I meet up with some poultry farmers there. Like I really start building much interest in poultry. Because I realized that agriculture is the backbone of the economy. And youths in the game don't tend to do agriculture because they think that it's for the primitive people, that people living in the rural end. And in the world, what we are about to face is food insecurity. So you've been into agriculture. The demand for food is already there. Maybe you have to come with business solution to make sure that you, the things that you produce will be put to the market and you make money out of it. So, and in the game, after I was doing my research in poultry, I realized that 95% of our poultry products is important. And most of this, especially in the egg sector, which I am focused on now, the eggs are either rotten or unhealthy. Why are they rotten or unhealthy? Because the duration that they spend, in the European farms, the moment they produce, when they put it in the European supermarket, two weeks at max, it will go off. So this is what our businessmen will go and buy and bring it to us. So they are buying like maybe not excellent product, but they are buying maybe average or bad product, bringing it to us. So when I was making my research, I came across a video by a man called Mohamed Sanyan. Last year he was here. This was the man who started with five chicken, and today he has 32,500 chicken, and in that game. And he's 24 years old, and he employed 26 people. I said to myself, if he can do it, I can do it too. <laughs> and it took me three months from attending those trainings in November, December. It took me three months to make research in the poultry industry. Then I meet up with many poultry farmers, then make all my research. Then I realized that there's a potential for this business. So early in January, I consulted my father, then we started the construction of the farm. When I approached my dad to tell him, I want to do poultry, he told me, like, for you, every time you bring an idea, you bring an idea, go raise one for yourself, you start. So for me, I'm kind of passing with anything that I want to do, I, I will do it. After he told me that, he was testing me in the beginning. Then I go within one month, two months, I have 10,000 of my own money, then bring it to him. So every time, I will bring in contractors to my house. Okay, we are taking measurements, we are doing the calculation. My dad told me, you see, if you are starting a construction, go and start. But every time if you want to calculate, your project will never kick start. So I start with the little saving I have, then he come and help me. And everything, the farm was done by the construction took one month from January 1st, from December 31st to January 31st. So and the farm was officially opened in 2018. But the business was registered in 2017, November, December. Why I did this is because to commit myself. And after I registered the business, I didn't even start putting, but putting on my social media, because I'm a social media guy, that ML, ML Fatih has decided to leave at it to do poultry. So, so that the entire world can know that, okay, now I'm committed to this. So if I don't do this, if I don't get into poultry, people will hold me accountable. So I started the poultry, and I started with... <laughs> and I started with 100 birds, 100 broilers as a pilot. So those 100 broilers, they go successful, but I do not make any profit. One of the... Well, whilst I was getting into the poultry industry, all my man was driven about, okay, within one year, I'll become a millionaire and I, I will travel all over the world and I will buy Range Rovers and live a fancy life. But when I start that business, way different. But the person kept me there. So after the 100, so when, that is when the Youth Empowerment Project Mini Gramsci came, came out, then I applied and I'm so lucky to be granted. And I also applied for the Rural Youth Award organized by Jin and I came out as the second runner. And also one of my mentors, Alaji Jallo, he's working at Suna, so they also help me financially. So currently, the business is about 10 to 12, an year old, 10 months to 12 months old, and I started with 100 brothers. So between February to June, we produce over 700 brothers. And currently, we switch to the layers. So I started with 350 layers, but I lose 40% due to disease outbreak at the 10 weeks. So I now have 200, they, are, they start the production. So overcoming the 
challenges. So some of the challenges that I faced in the beginning was access to finance. But I overcome this by through family support and also grant like the Youth Empowerment Project and others. And also marketing. Because in poultry, I realized that the cost of production for the local chicken is much more than the imported one. But I figured this out by partnering with other poultry farmers and also by dealing with like chicken vendors at the market. And also, other thing is the practical knowledge. By the way, when I was getting into the industry, I did not know much about the poultry industry, but I learned through my experiences and also from other experienced poultry farmers. And also, I would like to appreciate the support because me being here is to a lot of factors. I don't know support as individual support from the family level and also the CEO of Sunna Al Haji Jallo, Mohamed Idris Anjaya of Jean, and Mamo Fati, the CEO of Supersonics, I said Konati IC Business Solution, Mood NSJ Farm Fresh, Ablanco, Mohamed Sanya, Poultry Farmers and other, other of my friends. So at the institutional level, Youth Empowerment Project, Gene Gambia, Empretech, NEDI, GCCI, GYCC, SUNA, Startup Incubator University of the Gambia, and the Tough Africa Foundation. So the road to the future. My time is limited, but let me just try to summarize. So I would like uh, the youth to take note of this point. Because yesterday, and I, I always watched that video of Father Mustafa Anja. He always said, life is divided into four quarters. But for me, I say the 2020 20, 20 life plan rule. So in the, in the first 20 years, from 0 to 20, this is the course on stage. This is where people do everything for you. So as a youth, this is the time where you need to take your time not to get involved into serious crimes. Because if you get involved into serious crimes or serious things that will hinder you in the future, it will really affect you. And the second 20 years, that is 20 to 40, this is your career development. This is why you choose a particular career to work on it. And your third 20 years, that is 40 to 60, this is innovation and creativity. This is when you already build your career, then you have to be innovative in your career, and you have to be creative. And the fourth quarter is the 40, 62 upwards at any time you live. This is the giving back to the community, and I appreciate Father Mustafa Anjaya, that's what he is doing. So I'll mention some of my few plans to you. For me, like, zero to 20 years, I was, I was raised up in a noble family. Also learned business from my dad, because my dad is a businessman. I also get accepted to university whereas I was still in high school. And the second 20 years, that is right, which I have kickstarted is the second quarter. I started my own business, and I want to become a youth inspirational speaker. And I want to get married by the age of 22. Wow. <laughs> Uh, become a millionaire by the age of 23 because yesterday I should have been a millionaire but I, I now learned that it, I have to work hard to become a millionaire before the age of 23 and go for Hajj by 25 <laughs> and also on this stage I will also expand my poultry so that the third quarter, that is the 40 to 60. I want to retire at the age of 40 to 45. I don't want to work for my whole life. I want to retire and also like between 40 to 45, between 40 to 60, I meant to young people, travel the world, become a billionaire by the age of 50 and volunteer for people. So that is the last quarter, that is 60 to 80. I want to give back 50 to 70% of my net income at that time as charity. And also go for high yearly and build my legacy as Father Mustafa is doing. I'm, I'm currently working on my farm expansion plan to increase the production capacity from 200 to 2,500. Now like, I'm into serious business, and this must be completed before December 2020 with the potential to create employment for six people. So the approximate cost for the project is between 1.8 million to 2 million. That is about 40 to 60 thousand dollars. And the source of funds may come from ML Poultry Farm, potential investors, and grant and seed investment like the tough startups. And the vision of MS Poultry Farm is to become among the leading producers of quality local eggs in the Gambia. And our Sotam goal is to have a production capacity of 100,000 lean chicken in the next 10 years. And we want to enhance poultry farming and we want to make Gambia food self sufficient in poultry products. And these are all in line with Sustainable Development Goal 1, 2, and 8 of the United Nations, which is zero, which is zero poverty, no, no, zero, zero poverty, zero hunger, and decent jobs and economic growth. I'll talk about the challenges in the poultry industry. One of the challenges that we face, that is the cheap imported products. This is really affecting a lot of poultry farmers in time of market. For example, people go to the market, to the Seracunda market and they say a kilo of egg is for 125 and why are you selling that 160? 
So that this thing all will come. And the high cost of production, example, the feed and the, the old chick. And also the government policies. The government should really help us to protect the local farmers. Because if the government are not protecting the local farmers, very soon most of them will run out of business. Because we cannot compete with these European farmers. So the government should try to protect the local content. Just give me maybe extra one or two minutes, let me mention this. So my top 10 advices for youth for success. Please, youth, like, take note of this. One is you have to have self-belief and personal branding. Self-belief, you have to believe in yourself that you can achieve your dream. Because people will not invest in you or people will not have confidence in you if you don't believe in yourself. You have to have the belief in yourself. Then personal branding come into play. We have to, you have to take a particular industry or a particular sector and you focus on that. But I have seen a lot of youths in the game trying to do all kinds of things. So when you ask someone, I know someone in the, in the IT sector, they will not know who. But in the game, when you ask me, I know someone in the IT sector, young person, I will direct you to Azutech. Because I know he's, he's only in the IT. If you need maybe video production, Alaji Manga, if you need other things, there are other things. Because these are people that only focus into this industry. So they are, they are branding themselves to only that industry. When, and the second thing is you have to study people. Studying people, I don't mean you go to Sarakunda market, you study everyone, but studying people, you study successful people, successful entrepreneurs in the government, anywhere in the world, you see that part that they took to reach this success. And also, you have to study numbers. Entrepreneurship, it all comes to numbers. If I produce 20 crates every day, if I increase my production to 100 crates, what are my costs? How many margins should I make? What are the profits should I make? Should I go in for it or not? You have to study out all this, and you have to study your industry. What are the new things? How can I become competitive than my, uh, my competitors? What are the new trends in this industry so that you can upgrade yourself to where the people are operating. Or it's like you'll be operating in the 1980s while people are still in the 21st century and you'll be out of the market very soon. And have a vision. That, that is the third point. You need to have a vision. The vision will direct you to where you go. And be passionate. Your passion will keep you going. For me, for the last six months, I have not been making any money. I make serious losses, but alhamdulillah, my passion still keep me here. And be focused. You'll have a lot of distraction. When I started my business, a lot of people, they call me. There was this one guy, he called me from United States. He said, hey, Emil, I want to give you $2 million. I tell him, hey, I don't need $2 million. If, even if I have $2 million, I'll put it in the bank. Because right now, I cannot take $2 million and invest into my business. What will I do with that money? So absolutely, you have to be focused. A lot of distraction will come. Financial distraction will come. Family distraction will come. Social distraction will come. But just be focused on it. And network. As they say, network is your network is your network. You have to network with like-minded people so that you can really grow. And have a mentor. If you don't have a mentor for you to succeed, it is very, very slim. You don't have a mentor of people who build successful business or people who are successful in their career to mentor you. These are the people who will guide you and coach you. You are, they are taking this direction. It is wrong. And these are people, you can take, you can take one more, two months to read a book, but these are people who can summarize an entire book for you in just one or two hours and sit in. And you maintain your personal integrity. This is one of the key things. You can lose money. Money is not the key thing. You can lose money, but the moment you lose your integrity, people will not have the confidence in you. And do not disappoint. Don't disappoint people. You're, to all the young people or to all the young entrepreneurs, your family believe in you. Your friends believe in you. And the people, there are a lot of people who believe in you, so do not disappoint these people. Because if you disappoint them, you are not only disappointed them, but you are disappointed the whole nation. For me, example, Tufts Africa Foundation believe in me. This is why they invested, they invested 500,000 into me. So I should not let them down. So this is why I will make sure by all means to become successful. Inshallah, I will become successful. And the last thing is to impact people. You have to impact people. If you meet anyone, for me, if I meet you, if I cannot add anything into your life, I will not take anything from your life. If you cannot impact someone positively, do not impact people negatively. Because I want to be remembered as someone who, when my name is mentioned, about 85 or 90 but 85 to 95 percent of people will remember me for my good stuff, but not for my bad stuff. So, on this note, and I will wrap up. Everything in this world, what you do, everything goes down to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. No matter what knowledge you have, what wealth you have, and everything you have, every success and failure is destined by Allah. So, as people of religion, as people of religion, let us put our faith in God. And last year, I was here at the Tafcon 2017. I was sitting around that end. I was just a mere participant without no business, with zero dollars. And I told a friend called Mukhtar Jalla, he is right here. You see, next year, 2018, I will be part of the youth speakers to inspire and motivate other youths. <laughs> and 12 months later, I have achieved that. 
And also, I am the first runner-up of the Tough Startup Pitching Competition with a grand prize of $500,000. If I can do it, you can do it too. And I firmly believe in this room, we are having the next Mustafa Njais, we are having the next Mohammed Jass, and the next business tycoon, and the movers and seekers in Africa, because I believe in the Gambian youth, and I believe in the Gambian dream. And we can really make it here. I thank you all. Oh, yes. <laughs> wow.